there's a significant number of passages in the New Testament which explicitly show that Jesus is not God. There are also many small, often unnoticed details that show the same thing. This video is about the details. We're going to look at one chapter, Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to pick out some of the details in that. And once you've seen them, you probably won't forget them. Now, at the end of the, the video, we'll then see how they fit together with one of the bigger issues about the nature of Jesus. So, subscribe, hit the notify button, and off we go. One thing is that if you're looking for truth in a set of data, in a, in a, in a passage, in something like that, then often it, it, it's there, it stands out, as it does in this case. But it doesn't just appear in a few passages that we read that say it explicitly, it also appears in the details that we, we can see as well. And uh, we're going to look at one of these in Ephesians chapter 1. Quite often we read through the Bible and we don't see these details. We, we see other things, but we, we miss out on these little details and it, it doesn't really disturb us, but it should. And in the details you'll see that the doctrine of the Trinity doesn't appear. Not only did it not appear, the details actually overturn the doctrine of the Trinity. And the example we're going to look at is Ephesians chapter 1. Now here we go, Ephesians chapter 1, there are the first two verses, and it starts off, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Now, in that little clause there, there's two references, there's a distinction between them. The two references, one of them is Christ Jesus, the other one is God. So already we're getting this little detail that Jesus and God are being distinguished from one another. And we get it again in verse 2. It says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is seen as somebody different from God our Father. Just this little distinction that's there, two reference, one of them God the Father, the other one, Jesus Christ. And that is showing a distinction. It's showing this distinction. God is one entity. Jesus is a different entity. That's what's appearing in this passage. And we'll see it over and over again. Here we are, on to verse 3 now. And here we have a reference to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. So it's telling us that the Father of Jesus is also the God of Jesus. Uh, Jesus has a God. That's what it's telling us. And that gives you some extra questions. We, Jesus has a God. That's the important point. It's the detail, but it brings it out. The question we have to ask ourselves is, who is this God? Who is the God of Jesus? Well, this God is also the Father of Jesus. That's what he's telling us. Right? So we've seen that Jesus has a God, and that God is the Father. And that brings on another question, which is, is there any other God besides the God of Jesus? Well, we know from the New Testament, we know from the whole Bible, repeat it over and over again there is exactly one God no more no less so the one God is the father of Jesus and let's move on down the, the chapter and we've got another passage here and well let's think who it is well the subject of, of, of the, the, the whole sentence is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 3, here it's just the pronoun he. And he talks as, as being uh, marked out for adoption through Jesus Christ. So God is working through Jesus Christ. Again, there's this little 
distinction between the two of them. It's one you can't really overlook. Well, you can, you read it, you don't notice it, but once you've seen it, you can't overlook it. God, the Father, it says, works through Jesus. On a bit further down, um, well, verse 17 is the verse I really want to look at. Um, to get the whole sentence, I've got to have verse 16 as well. And again, it refers to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's telling us again, Jesus Christ has a God. And again, you can ask the question, who is the God of Jesus? And it tells us that the God of Jesus Christ is the Father of glory. So, again, Jesus has a God. God doesn't have a God. God is the greatest possible being. But Jesus has a God. So, therefore, Jesus is not God. Carry on down the passage. He talks about God's work. Again, he goes further on. It says that God worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So, the God of Jesus raised Jesus from the dead. That's another important statement. And in fact, it goes on. It says that not only did God raise Jesus, he seated him at his right hand. Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God. And he has been exalted above all rule and authority and power and dominion. He's given a name above every name that he's named uh, not only in this age, he says, but in the age to come, the God of Jesus has exalted Jesus. Uh, tells us something else about Jesus. It tells us that Jesus had to be exalted. If God hadn't exalted Jesus, then he wouldn't have been this Lord. Uh, as it says in Acts 2, verse 36, God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus who you crucified. So, We've reached another important statement that God works on Jesus. God has given Jesus authority. God has raised Jesus up and exalted him. Jesus has a God. And Jesus depends on his God to give him power and authority. So, uh, does this make sense? Have you noticed details like this elsewhere in other chapters? Let us know in the comments. Now, this has raised a big issue, the point that Jesus has a God. Jesus has a God, and that gives us the question, we asked it before, let's ask it again, who is the God of Jesus? And Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ is the Father of glory. So the one God, the Father of glory, is the God of Jesus Christ. And that's telling us that Jesus has a God, and so Jesus isn't God. So let's conclude. There are lots of big reasons for believing that Jesus is not God. The fact that Jesus has a God is just one of them. There are many others as well. Uh, if you look at Revelation 3 verse 12, you'll see that's repeated four times in that one verse. Altogether, Jesus talks about his God ten times in the New Testament, and there are a whole lot of other places where the apostles refer to the God of Jesus Christ. Um, what we've seen, though, is it's not just these big passages that say the same thing over and over again. The little details of the Bible also give us the same picture. Very often you read the Bible, you read over a bit of, of, of uh, text, and you won't realize that it's saying that Jesus isn't God. You automatically replace the word God with the Father. You, you don't really think about it. Think about it. It brings truth. And we've seen some details like that in Ephesians 1, but they're all over the place. Almost every chapter in the Bible has some detail in it which will show you something about the relationship between Jesus and God, and it will show you that Jesus is not God. There are lots, lots more. Once you've seen them, it's 
It's very hard to forget them. So look out for them. Look out for passages in the Bible that tell us that Jesus is not God, even in little details. Well, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, there's a like button you can, you can press. Um, look out for a website. Uh, there's a lot more detail on that. And of course, there are lots of other videos on this channel. So thanks for watching and may God bless you always. Mm -hmm.